Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, what a night. Uh, uh, Siam is really good at making an announcement. Next week, who's not going to be Jesus? Eh? That's pretty good. Amen. Okay, uh, I, I, like the, uh, I like the fact that we, we go to the, ser- I mean, uh, the sermon really, really fast. And I, I, I like it because I, st- I think we still have the, uh, the atmosphere of worship in this place. Uh, if you don't mind, would you all stand? Amen. Uh, it's, I'm not gonna take. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna take it too long because I'm kind of hungry and I know I have something to eat downstairs. So I'm gonna make it really quick. Amen. All right. Um, before I, I, I'm just gonna read the Bible verse. Uh, Isaiah chapter six, verse eight. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, "Whom shall I send, and who will go for us?" Then. Said I, here I am, sent me. I would like to uh, read this second verse, uh, second uh, Bible verse. First Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 15, which is our, uh, our theme for this year. But as, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations. Because it is written... Be ye holy, for I am holy. Let's, um, in, in a minute, I want to preach about, uh, I, I, I titled this, Here Am I. And if you could uh, bow your head and pray for the service and pray, pray for me. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you, we love you. Thank you so much for gathering us this year. Lord, I pray that you will speak to us, God. Lord, I pray that you will shake us and mold us, oh God. Lord, I pray that you will have your way on this place. Use us and teach Lord, let us be, renew our mind and strength in this place. We submit our times and our life in your name, in, we, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shake your neighbor and say you are so handsome today or you are so beautiful today. Amen. You may all be seated. Thank you. You can be seated. Oh. Uh, first of all, it is uh, what a privilege and honor to be here with all of you today. I'm kind of nervous today. I'm, I'm kind of shaking right now. And it's because I haven't preached in English for a while since I graduated from IBC. English is not the, uh, our first language. So it's, it's really, it's, it's like three or four years uh, I haven't preached. But I, will, I think I have uh, a word from God today. Amen. Every time, I don't know about, I, I, I don't know about C.S. and Cooper, everybody, everybody else who preach, but every time I try to preach in front of everybody, the first thing that I practice is my tone. I, I have to take my time and practice my tone, like, how, is gonna, how am I going to sound like, uh, hello, everybody, or hello, everybody, or how, I, I want to know the tone, the tone set that I need to practice. So every time I have to preach, I have been preaching, um, in English for a while, and then I have to, the first thing come to my head is that the tone of my voice is going to be, how is it going to be like the tone of my voice? Is it going to be like, do I speak like, hi to everybody, or how do I, what kind of accent do I pick up? I just don't know. Do I, do I, do I have to sound like a little bit ghetto, or do I sound like, hello everybody? I don't know which one to pick, but that's the, the first thing that I practice every time I have to preach in English. And also, I have to practice uh, one more thing, the word. Uh, last year, we have English service. And Uli and Kai was sitting in, the back, uh, sitting in the back with some other people and saying that uh, if, if I, uh, he, he was speaking in Zomi. And he was like, uh, if I was, uh, if they ever asked me to go up there, I'm going to be like, what's up, Jesus? <laughs> you see, some of the word, uh, I have to like get, get them. I have to get it right to speak in front of everybody. So that thing I have to practice all, all, like all of them. Every time I have to look at the mirror, I have to speak it to myself all the time. But uh, it is good and honor that I, I think that you can pick it up a little bit. And I hope that you, will, uh, you, will, you got some of the words that I said. I, as I told you, I'm kind of nervous. And pe- uh, bear with me. Also, and I want to honor... Um, my, pa- uh, my dad, my pastor, 
and Sia Suan and uh, Sia Suan Koop and Sia Don Tang. Thank you so much for. Uh, can we all give hand to the man of God? This is the man that I I been really look up to. The patience or the, the the knowledge that they have, the obedience that they have with the word of God. I really look up to them and I, I really uh, thank them. And also uh, thank you so much all the youth leader for inviting me here. And uh, I know uh, youth leader. I, w I was a youth leader last uh, last time, and it wasn't easy. Every time we have to get it, get, do something. We want everybody to be. Uh, get in the church. How are we going to persuade them to the church? Uh, how do I bake them to the church so that they could come? And it is not, uh, it, it is the one of the uh, hardest prob I mean, uh, problems that I face. And, and I'm glad that like, you have a lot of people here tonight. And I want to give a hand to all the PLM. Can we all give a hand for PLM? Because I know like they've been, like, they don't go picnic or they don't do exercise all the time. They are in the house cooking for our meal, of cooking the meal and taking care of the baby and today they go out and play all day at the sun and they all make it here and I'll thank you so much for, uh, um, for making over here then that shows us that you care about our generation you care about your youth and I will thank you so much for that and I want to thank to my family and well, for being so supportive to me and they support me every way and uh, last but not the least, my beautiful wife, I want to say thank you so much for, uh, not because of her, uh, if it's not because of her, I'm not going to be here because, you know, all the guys are kind of lazy, but you have some, when you have a wife, you have somebody else to keep pushing, you know, you don't want to do something, you don't want to do something, you just like, you know, they will be okay, like, look, you said that, you're going to do this, and you got to do it, and you're like, yeah, I say that, and then, I, even though I try to be mad, but I cannot mad because I said those words already. So I thank you so much, uh, um, and I love you so much. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Amen. And also, also, I want to thank you so much for all the worship leaders and uh, musicians. You guys do an incredible job. I know it's not easy. The first time I preach in English, it's not easy. I'm shaking. I have to... I have to like how to pronounce right, but you did it so good. Now, uh, thank you so much for leading and all the musicians. You are doing awesome. And I thank you so much for leading us to the worship. And as the worship leader said, I feel the presence of the Lord here. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord here. I know that, I believe that God is going to do something tonight. Amen. I believe that God is going to heal somebody today. I believe that God is going to set somebody free today. I believe that God is going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm so humbled to be here. You have, I think somebody have a phone call or, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. I am so humbled to, uh, I am so humble to be here. Uh, I, I want to like, I don't, I don't take this opportunity lightly. I prayed about it when I heard, uh, uh, kind of called me, I was, I was praying like, I don't know, Lord, give me a word so that I, I can be a blessing to somebody and give me a word that I can be a blessing to my fellow youth in, in ZPC. And I pray about it. And nothing stuck on my heart, but God is dealing with this subject. Here I am. And it's come to my head all the time. I try to think, I try to like, I, try to, I pray that um, to make a confirmation, Lord, uh, is that something else you want me to say? Or well, I keep praying, but it's never go away. So I want to, I want to, uh, I choose this um, subject and the topic would be, here I am. So uh, to start off, hey, did you guys ever translate or did you, I, I know some of you guys, who, does, who doesn't speak English? Mm. Most of everybody know, that's, that's amazing. Even, even Pinyang know it because he doesn't raise our hands, Amen. Okay, have you, ever, have you guys ever translate for somebody else, for appointment or some clinics? Yes? How is that? Is that easy or is that, is that how? It's, it's kind of, even though you speak English, it's kind of it's hard to interpret for somebody else, right? And I've been doing that ever since I got to America in 2005. Uh, I, I started translating and I started translating in 2005. We were lost in the airport LAX in Los Angeles. 
and we lost Daniel at the airport. And, and uh, we, we've, been, we've been looking for him. He, he, at the time, he was so small. So he, I don't know where he went because we are looking for the airport, the next flight. We got all our stuff. And then my mom was like, hey, you need to ask somebody. You need to come. And I'm like, I don't want to. I, want, I don't want to go. But my mom pushed me like, you, okay, if you don't want to say, come and translate for me. And then that's the first time I ever translated. I was like, uh, where is that? And my mom was like, what is that? I'm like, um, where is the, uh, the airport? I want to go to Houston. And like, uh, we don't have time. And, you know, it's kind of awkward. And I've been doing that ever uh, until today. I was translating everybody, I mean, to, for appointment or go to clinic or everywhere. But uh, re uh, recently, I take an interpreting class. And everything I thought I know, even though I speak English, everything I know was, I was doing it wrong for the whole 13 years. Have you guys ever experience that you, you thought you were doing something right for all the time and then you realize it's oh I didn't know it was the right way have you guys experienced that I feel so um, okay I feel so uh, dumb at the time I was like oh wow I didn't know because uh, the um, my, my instructor said uh, if somebody w want to share about the interpreting um, experience and then they, we, we split, uh, we have like six and six people. And I was the first one to uh, speak out. And then I, was, I, went, I went up there. I feel like since I know English and my pronunciation, it's a lot better than somebody else. I feel so confident. I, I, I was so proud. And I'm like, I keep translating, translating, translating. I, was, I feel so good. And I, my turn is over. I was, I was like smiling at everybody. I feel like I'm doing good. And then later on, the real translator come and everything they do, because every time, every time I translate for somebody, I using the third person, I want to go to the bedroom, like she wants to go to the bathroom. And I looking at the person and then I was keep doing it wrong. And then I was the first person, I didn't know it. And since I, when everybody is done, I feel so dumb. I'm like, I was so proud at the time, but when everybody done, I'm not supposed to do that. As an interpreter, you don't have to like, look, it's about you and the person. And then you have to be stay in the back or, or stay at 45 degree. And then you have to look down so that they can have eye contact with the patient and the provider. And I didn't know. I was keeping like, I want to go to bed. Oh, she wants to do such and such. I was keeping, I was keep talking to. And then I was suggesting like, I don't think she wants to do that. You know, like, I think that would be better. I give a suggestion. It's supposed to be the, the, the patient and the provider. So, oh, and I didn't know that. I know it. I find out when everybody else done, I'll feel so dumb. At that moment, I feel like, okay, I do not know nothing. I've been translating for 13 years, and I do not know anything. Okay, that's, that's something that changed my life. Because when you look at it, you, you call yourself a Christian. You call you say you believe God. But at the end, at the judgment, when God judge you, if, what if what you expected is not like Oh, I don't, I didn't, I, I didn't know. Are uh, you supposed to do that? No, I didn't know. You cannot do that. You'll be so dumb. I feel so ashamed because I've been translating 13 years and all the things that I do was wrong. So if, when God will judge you, you're going to be sitting in front of a, a millions, a billions. And if he judge you and then you're like, Wait, I, you feel like, okay, I am Christian. Uh, uh, I, I, I be, I've been born again. I got the Holy Ghost. And when you go up there and then you will, everything that you've been practicing is wrong. Everything that you're trying, everything that you think, everything that you practice, all come to the end. You will say, I'm sorry. You've been doing wrong. I am afraid of I, when I when I experience that, I don't want to be when when I go to heaven. I don't want to, I don't want to be that person. When I feel like I living for God my whole life, and then when when I go to heaven, I'm like, you've been practicing wrong. You're not supposed to do that. You know that. You're not supposed to live the way you live. You're supposed to live what God how God want to live. Amen. I don't want to be that person who, who, who act whatever I want in this world and go up there and judge in front of God and then he judges us with the Bible. He doesn't judge us with, uh, uh, mer well, he will judge us with the mercy, but he's not going to judge us like understanding. Okay, you go to, you go to church and it's understandable. Okay, I'll let you go. It's not going to be like that. So what if you believe or you practice whatever you do 
it's come to the end. And it was all, all, all wrong and you've been ashamed. That's what I want. I have God is battling in my heart that if you, some of the Christian nowadays, when I see a Christian, those Christians doesn't look like Christ anymore. Christians are supposed to look like Christ. You have to look like Christ. You have to love everybody like a Christ. You have to, you have to nice to everybody like Christ. But you are, you call yourself a Christian and you don't want to even... You don't even want to read Bible. You don't, want, you don't even want to go to youth service. You don't even want to pray. And then you think you're going to heaven with that. All the things that you, everything, you going to church, do you think it's going to make you heaven? No. When it's the end of the day, God will judge you. What you are doing. Did you live according to how God wants you to live? That is, that is the moment going to come. At the time, where are you? There's a lot of people who are lost in this world. We live, in the, we live in the last day. This is the last day. What does that mean? Okay, the last day. That means this is the end. The end of the day, the years. The end of the, 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 uh, the end time is coming. Nowadays, people laugh so much. How do I know? When, oh, I recently got a, 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 a Instagram. And I, what, when, when I got an Instagram... I'm not bragging about Instagram. I am, I trying to tell about, I want to know what people are doing. I see a, a lot of Christian coming from Burma, acting like the world. Women exposing everything in public for men's attention. I found out that. And it's not good. This is the other People are so loved. You all, you all, you love yourself so much. You don't care about what people said about you. You love, you love yourself so much that you want to post it so that people can like it. So that you can check your phone all the time. Every time you post a picture, you always have to check who liked it. Every time you post something, you have to check who liked it. You should know when you post something. And then, I don't like him, and then... That's, that's because if we love ourselves. Because you want to see who like us. That's when you, when you don't get a lot of light, guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, expose myself a little bit so that one, people can like it or other people can view it. So I can get more view or I can get more light. I see a lot of young women in Instagram exposing their body. Not, 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 not about everything, but exposing their body. They're trying to show everything off. That's disgusting. When somebody, when a guy look at your picture, they're not looking at you like they love you. They're, if they talk to you, they doesn't love you. They just want to play. They just want to play with you. If they love you, they will love you in, in the beginning when you don't expose anything. So young woman, you are beautiful. You are, it doesn't matter how, you, you doesn't have to put any makeup on. I, I think my wife is beautiful when she wake up in the morning. That's how every man is supposed to be. Man, if a man like you because of you put makeup on, do not like them. They don't like you. If you are ugly, they're not going to love you. So that's why they don't love you. They just want to play with you. And then yet, all the young women, they want to expose something. They want to get affirmation. So that they expose some of them, some of the, uh, um, the thigh or some of the, uh, um, I don't want to say it. <laughs> Just to get a light. Because this is the last thing. You love yourself. And when somebody talks to you, and so when somebody come and tell you, hey, you are not supposed to do that. This is not what God wants. And then you are mad. Because you don't want other people to, to tell you what to do. Because you love yourself. That's, what, that's exactly what happened in Isaiah. Isaiah, people are, that's, they don't want to hear anything. They hear the word from God. They know how to, they know how to live. They, you know how to wear dress. You know how to wear, act. But you heard it. But you never act like it. That's when God wants somebody. The angel and God are having a conversation. Who will go? And that's when who are gonna, are you gonna, are you going to respond it? Or how are you gonna respond it? Also, 
Some of the, some of, and, and, and among every young, any young men and young women, you are so focusing about who you are. This generation now, now that the generation are meaningless. You know what does that mean? Meaningless mean man. It doesn't mean man. Women doesn't mean women. Couple married. Love doesn't mean what it used to be. That's why some of you guys are. Uh, if I look at your phone or if I check at your phone, you have a, you, you are sex uh, sexting with somebody else. You know what does it mean? You expose, you take a picture and you send it to somebody else. And that's really nasty. And you don't know and it will destroy your mind and your mentality. You don't care about those sometimes. You, you, you hear those. You know it. You know how to live but you don't want to follow it. And then you don't know, you don't understand how far you got into sin until you come to the church. You, you don't feel nothing. You don't feel the presence of God. Sometimes it's hard for you to feel the presence of God in this place. Why? Because you are so much junk. You have so much junk in your life. If you, are in the, if you are in the light, you can see the light better. If you are far away from the light, you cannot see the light. Hello? And then this, this generation, we are so focusing so much on the, on the temporal, temp, temporal thing. I read about life, uh, the purpose-driven life by Rick Warren. I think it's about chapter 5. Young men and young women, I want you to know everybody in this building. I want you to know God is make you so that you can last forever. Your body is not going to last, but your spirit will be last forever. In doing this 60 or 70 years, God give you a warm up for the eternity. And then some of them, we, we don't see that. You think your life is going to be end, end here. You, when you die, your life is just going to start when you die. And always know that whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever, if, if you praise or if you are singing a song, or whatever you do in, in, in 60 or 70 years while you are alive, that will take you to the eternity. Some people don't know that they have to that they have the eternity waiting. You only living 60 or 70 years. You are focusing everything in, in this life about 60 or 70 years. You work so hard, you do everything for so hard. You are focusing everything for 60 or 70 years. But when life is going to start when you die. So do not hesitate to praise God when you can. Stop, do not stop praising God. Do not stop playing instrument in church or whatever you do. And for some music, musician and worship leader, God loves praise. Yes, of course he loves it. But God doesn't focus much on the, the, the talent. God's one you heart. You can be talented so much, but you can live whatever you want to live. Or like what, the, the most important thing in your life, it's what, how you live outside of the church. That you are representing over here. That's what you have to focus on. Something that, that is eternity. God is, you sometimes, all, all the young people, uh, all, all of us, sometimes we feel like God is, we are looking for God. Actually, it's not. God is looking for us. When you, are, go, when you go to church, know that God is looking for you. Because it's you and me, the one who disobey God and, and, and flee from him. God is looking for you. I don't know where you're at, but they said this world is a broken world. People are hurting. People are uh, filled with addiction. People are, a lot of young people nowadays are in jail because they feel or they think about the uh, temporally. They feel like if I don't use my time right well, before I get married, I will never get this time again. That's mindset come to their head. And then they leave whatever they want to leave. And they do whatever they want to do. And they didn't know they destroyed their whole credit. But your life right now, it's for your future, although eternity. God, when God makes you, he planned for eternity. Amen. You need to focus on what are eternity. Do not focus on what is temporary. You're looking for fame while you are in young. When you're looking for some uh, good job, peg on the bed and say good job. Do not look for that. Look for something that is far beyond our eternity. How, when you go to heaven, what are you going to bring? Or when you go to heaven, what are you going to do? 
That is the most important thing. Our mindset will be kingdom mindset. All of us, most of us, we are so focused on early things. That's why we don't want to share the gospel about something. Or we don't even know how to share it. The world are coming to the end. People need a salvation. When you act like, when you talk like the world, you cannot save them. But to you, if you want to save somebody, first you have to be saved first. And some people doesn't know that. Some people believe that if they, if they act like the world, they're going to win the world. It's not how it's going to work. If better it's working, Jesus is not going to come. He's going to call somebody else and do the work. But to able to save somebody, you have to be saved first. Amen. That's why you need to focus on what's our eternity. How can you save somebody? Or if you are not saved, salvation, your salvation could be today. Or, other, or, other, or otherwise, your life is going to be, you've been interpreting the whole life. And at the end, everything you do is wrong. Even though you speak English, you can be interpreting something wrong too. And I don't want to be, I, I don't want everyone to do that. They need, the world need a directions. The world are, so, are hungry for God. And if you don't have a something from God, you cannot feed them. Or you, if, you, you, if you can, you can even uh, speak to their life. Because you, if you're not saved, you cannot save somebody. If you are in jail... You cannot, save some, you cannot save somebody inside from the jail. You have to be outside of the jail and save it. The same thing with life. If you want to save somebody, if you are thinking about kingdom mindset, you want to save somebody, you have to be saved first. But I want you to know, you need to be saved. Or if you're already saved, it is time to act because God is needing somebody. And, and Isaiah God is speaking to angels and saying that, who do we send? Why? God is looking for somebody all the time. But you are focusing on, you are focusing on, you, you're dealing with early stuff so much. Sometimes you need to be, take time and listen to God. But you are, take, you are so busy listening to your music or listening to whatever you're doing. God wants you. Who will go? Who will go? If somebody in, in Nashville, if some, some family are broken, who will go? If somebody lost, who will go? Who will go for us? That's what they are discussing about. But to be able to go, you have to know something. You have to get something out of it. You have to get the Holy Ghost inside of you. Amen. And then most of the young people, most of our people, we are mistaking the holiness as modest, modesty. Let me tell you, you dress, it's beautiful, it's good, it's how you're supposed to do it. Your hair is supposed to be long, or you have, you're supposed to be covered all your uh, bodies. It is good, but you should know that is modesty. It's not holiness. Holiness comes from inside of you. When you got the Holy Ghost, when you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need to worry about those. The Holy Ghost will show you stuff. And then you say you believe in it here and you feel like you got the Holy Ghost. But when you're out, you are talking whatever you want to talk. Believe in God, it's not in church. It's outside of the church. You have to do it. Some of the young people, if you are you phone or you, you are messed up with a lot of, uh, 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 some of them are tr having a trouble with pornography too. Some of them just watch pornography and come here. And we don't want to expose that. But God wants you to know everything that you do, God knows it. You, every time, if you see tomorrow, if you see tomorrow, that means you have a second chance to be with God again. God, when God creates you, He doesn't create you in, in what God created Adam and Eve. He doesn't just leave it in Adam. Because just for fun. The reason God created you, because He wants to talk to you. Amen. You need to speak to God. You need to pray God. You need to read Bible. Who what kind of Christian are you? If you don't pray, if you don't read the Bible, if, if you don't believe what is believed. Some of, the, some of the young people just believe they are Christian because of the parents are Christian. That's baloney. That's all wrong. You have to experience it. Have you experienced the call of God? Have you experienced the voice of God? When is the last time you take time and talk to God? Most of the time, including me, 
I, I, I'm going to, wor- let's say, I'm going to worship. Instead of, I'm going to take 30 minute worship. Instead of praying for 30 minute worship, I prepare myself. How look I, I am, or I'm preparing uh, if I if I look good in front of people for 30 or 40 minutes. It should be more prayer in our life. Amen. God is looking for somebody because we, in in life we, when you're still alive, you have all the choice. You can choose whatever you want to do. But when you're dead, there's only two choices: you're going to hell or you're going to heaven. That's the only choice you're going to get when you die. But right now. You can choose whatever you want. You have to choose wisely. You have, God matters. God, God's problem, it's, but God's business, it's very, very, very powerful. It's about hell or heaven. That's it. He's serious about his job. And are you serious about God? Or are you just coming here to church because of your mom and dad, dad drag you? Or you have to be there. Or if I don't go, or somebody else is not going to be show up. God's won your heart. That's why everything we do, we have to do with holiness. Holiness comes from inside of you, knowing God, receiving the Holy Ghost inside of you. It will tell you what to do. God needs a young woman and a young man to deliver the word for him, to work for him. You can hear it. Oh, God can use you. But you have to say where you at. When Adam and Eve... Sin against God and eat for forbidden sin, forbidden food. They are hiding. Why? Because they feel ashamed. God, does, God knows where they are. But God wants to hear their repentance. God called them, Adam, Eve, where are you guys? Do you think God doesn't know where they are? He exactly knows where you are. Ask Adam and Eve. God know where you are, what you've been through, what you're doing, what are you feeling. God know it. God, God want to hear, where are you? You need to respond, say, here I am. Amen. When God wants you, what's God wants to use you to fix the broken heart, God's looking for somebody. And it is our responsibility to respond and say, here I am. God wants somebody to respond to his word. If you all, if you all could stand, I don't know if you got something out of it, but that is God, something that God is dealing with me in my heart. God wants somebody. God's looking for somebody. God's looking for somebody who's serious about stuff. I have a friend, my childhood friend, who passed away last year. He was alcoholic. When I was in Burma, 2016, I talked to him. Hey, bro, how are you doing? How is your life? And is everything okay? Uh, and I talked about God, and I talked about how bad the alcoholic is. And he told me, Joseph, I know alcoholic is really bad for me, and I know it. But I want, I want to get out too. Do you think I want to stay in alcohol? Do you, want, do you think I want to be the alcoholic? I, want, I try my best. Try to, I go to camp. I prayed about it. I don't get nothing. I, I, I'm not changing. He needs something in his life. I keep telling him about God. And then he say, thank you so much. Can you, give me, can you tell me more? Can you tell me more? Can you tell me more? He's hungry for the words of God. But I have to leave him because I have to come back to America. And a year later, I didn't re- hear him. But when I hear about him, he's already, his life is already gone. There's a lot of broken people we need to serve. There's a lot of broken family there's a lot of heart that need to be mended with God and God's want to use everybody but we have to respond here we are amen